Hey everybody, uh, it's Busted, Busted Strategies number 13. Let's jump in here, see what shows up. Right, uh, not bad. Oh, we're already starting in? This is the part where we gotta come in and just wait forever. <laughs> never, never fills up on the first try. There we go. So much trouble with that filling up. But alrighty, let's see what we get to start with here. I forget what this thing is. It's not... Horrible. I don't think it's the kind of card that we really want to start with, but this is one of these things where if the game just uh, goes on forever, having this draw card every turn is pretty big. It's just quite expensive to actually pull off. Uh, but we have been trying to look towards just kind of taking the strongest card out of each pack, uh, especially here at the beginning. I am kind of interested in the Ambusher, uh, since vampires tend to be kind of open. It's still good in just non-vampires decks. Don't really like starting with Burly Breakers because it's just a big dude. Uh, so otherwise, we're really just looking at like an organ hoarder. I think we can take an ambusher here. Uh, not the hugest fan of vampires, but if this is like where we're starting, maybe this will be okay. It's tough. I mean, I kind of just want to take... It's like I, I have such a hard time thinking vampires is ever any good. I, I kind of just like having the, the, the cheap early game play that can potentially blow out a game let's take the rare this is just like i think with like the valderan ambusher if it like turns up uh you know like pick seven then great then maybe it's happening i just don't think it's something we ever want to start with okay so this is another interesting one i i really love these root coil creepers uh and i think we can probably just come in and try to take advantage of this we are seeing like a shadow bee sighting organ hoarder here uh, these are both cards that the Root Coil Creeper deck would love to have, but these just like haven't been tabling. I, I've been kind of talking here recently about the ideas here in these early packs to where we want either, uh, you know, a big bomb, we want a removal spell, and then we want to kind of take note of the uh, the uncommons uh, that are multicolored. And so like I wouldn't be surprised to see the Sunrise Cavalier table, but these Root Coil Creepers don't seem to want to be able to do it. But it is ultimately just like super powerful in terms of uh, these like Shadow Beast sighting self mill decks, and I'm willing to take the risk on uh, on on starting with one here. Okay, well, this is another good continuation of the of the um, the self mill deck. If that's where we're going to end up, picking up the Covetous Castaway. This is a uh, fantastic card. It's great to play early just to stall out the games. Uh, the self mill activates on him, and then. It's a fantastic game closer with this uh, Ghostly Castigator. So I think that's where we want to be. Uh, we could have this, you know, start where we would have had, like, the Valderan Ambusher or something in the previous pack, the Purifying Dragon, or, you know, the Moonrage Slasher. But I think I feel safe enough just kind of, like, thinking in the back of our head that we're going to be in blue-green. And then maybe we'll even have Secrets of the Key Table. So I think this is fine. Getting some real high-powered cards here. And alrighty, we'll get to pick up a Locked in the Cemetery here. The big weakness to uh, to drafting blue-green is your removal is garbage, right? If your opponent plays something like uh, Trisk, Aid, Kefiali, uh, there's just nothing you can do about it, right? You can put uh, Locked in the Cemetery on it. You can maybe pick up some of the green removal and fight it, or you can pick up like Crossbow Shot. But in general, it's just like you have Locked in the Cemetery and a bunch of bounce spells. Uh, and so it's a, a bit of a struggle. But this is like the premier removal that we're going to find in these decks, and then we're not really passing on much any other way. So strong addition there. Okay, well, fairly weak cards. Nothing here makes me upset about uh, the cards we've taken to this point. I'm looking at like the Donhart Mentor. Uh, it's just a, a nice little board stall card. I kind of you know, really like these bird admirers, but I, I don't usually want to play more than two bird admirers, and we usually don't have trouble finding them. And so uh, I'm going to take the mentor here, uh, since we uh, may have, you know, a bunch of ramp. If we pick up, a, like, eccentric farmers, we should have some additional uh, kind of land draw -y kind of cards. We might be able to take advantage of that in the late game. Okay, then here, these cards are all fairly weak. It does look like... Uh, you know, the, the Coven deck is kind of open. I think we passed, like, two Don, Donhart Wardens and then the, the Donhart Mentor. But I don't think we're ever just going to be switching over to that. I was trying to think if, like, the red cards would have paid off. It would have been fine. The, the Thangblade Brigade is fine. But here, uh, nonetheless, I'm just going to take the Candlelit Calvary. This usually doesn't make the cut in this kind of deck. Uh, but we need to make sure we have, like, something in the top end uh, before we get too far along. 
uh, here we get to pick up some filler. Uh, we still like I've been struggling these days with making sure we have enough two drops. Uh, we're on good track here with the the creeper, the rare, and the castaway. I, I think the the pestilent wolf is the best of the options here. I don't really care for timberland guide, uh, and this being able to trade up with the death touch uh, works out nicely. All right, let's get up here to pick ten and see if the uh, <laughs> see if the the Shadow Beast sightings tabled. So sick when those table in these drafts. But that's such a big combo in this. Uh, using Royal, Root Coil Creeper and the uh, Unblinking Eye, whatever the two cost is that uh, only gives you like spells and graveyard cards, um, and, and then ramping into Shadow Beast sighting. Here, these cards are all fairly garbage. Um, I, I think we can easily enough get a Secrets of the Key, but I, I want to make sure we have enough early plays, so I'm going to snatch up this Snarling Wolf here. Okay. Alrighty, well there's the top end. This is look like the, the, the candlelit cavalry is looking a little more unnecessary and the, the Voldaren ambush are tabled. <laughs> That's the, the state of red. Well, I'm kind of glad I don't like to first pick these. Uh, but with this, I'm going to take the tireless hauler. Uh, the, the vigilance is just much more important than, than the point of ward. Uh, and he's, uh, I think this is just a much better closer than the, than the stats, being able to kind of get into these turns to where you're uh, still able to defend yourself uh, with your Vigilance unit uh, quite strong. Here, we're probably never playing Howl of the Hunt, but it's the only on-color card. Our Shadow Beast sighting didn't come back, but uh, Secrets of the Key did. I, I never play Bounding Wolf uh, in these style of decks, but we do occasionally play Secrets of the Key. Let's take out the blue card. Geist Wave. That's a, that's a nice one to pick up here super late. Okay, well, not a bad start. Ultimately not, like, super powerful, but uh, we, we just need to find some, like, Shadow Beast sightings, and I, I think we'll be good. But as far as this self-mill deck goes, uh, the Death Bonnet Sprouts are great. The, the kind of the idea you end up with this deck is you, you do the self-mill with the Death, Death Bonnet Sprout, the Eccentric Farmer, and um, uh, the, the four-cost zombie that you look at the top three, draw one, mill two. Uh, that's kind of like the core of your mill strategy, and then the payoff is mainly Shadow Beast sighting. And so uh, hopefully get a get more on track with that kind of thing. Picking up the sprouts are just always quite good in this style of deck, though. Okay, okay. Well, this, we, we, we can't be, like, ultra greedy here. We have to take the Shadow Beast sighting, but I would love to have this Hound Tamer. This dude is absolutely fantastic the 3-3 three, three for 3 stat line is great uh, this plus 1 plus 1 counter ability just gives you tons of stuff to do with your mana in the late game but the shadow beast is where all the payoff is in this deck so everything in this deck builds towards the shadow beast sighting whether or not it's the the ramp cards and the root coil creepers or the self mill stuff to just get a, get the the flashback copy for free uh, this is kind of the the glue that binds the simic deck together All right, well, glad to pick up another one. Works for me. Pack two has been good to us. <laughs> Between the Death Bond and Sprout and the two Shadow Beast sightings, can't complain too much more about this pack uh, if the cards are going to fall to us like that. Okay, okay. Looking good. I like how this is happening. I mean, we've got our good early game. Covetous Castaways, again, are great here. These do everything we're looking for a card to do in this style of deck. Picking up the Shadow Beast sightings. If, if you do end up with these, you can kind of look to play Delver of Secrets. I, I really don't like Delver of Secrets in Limited. It's too hard to pull off. But as you know, if you're, if you're having like four and five of your creatures be Shadow Beast sightings and uh, Ant Maker, then you can potentially look to the, the Delver. Not, not something I really want to consider here. Uh, but with this, we can support a natural growth. This, is, this should be good to steal a game or two. Just a ultimately pretty powerful spell assuming you can handle that four green casting cost and we got you know a start we have the um the the single root coil creeper we might pick up um the likes of a uh dawn heart four cost thing that taps for any color mana 
Uh, I, I could see us potentially pulling this off. You don't get to play it till like turn eight or turn ten, anyways. So, a lot of raw power coming out of pack two here. Someone's out here making the big decisions. You gotta. Sometimes you just gotta go take a pee in the middle of the draft, so you <laughs> you take you take maximum time. All right, not not very many interesting things here. I, I think I'm just gonna take Ludovic for the rare. Like I don't think. <laughs> I mean, I guess realistically we should look to play either a Geist Wave or a Flip the Switch, but I'm gonna just go for the wild cards in this one. I, I think our deck is coming together strong enough to where we can uh, we can take a little bit of value. All right, all right. I'm not opposed to playing cards like Turn the Earth. There's, if we're playing best of three, this would be a lot better. Uh, when you get to kind of pick and choose, you know, you might randomly run into vampires where this just doesn't really do anything. But uh, there is uh, some reasonable power within this card. Otherwise, we're really just passing on Falcon Abomination, which isn't a strategy our deck is really trying to take advantage of. Uh, and so, I think we could we could probably use Turn the Earth here. This is coming together fine. So the the, th the things I'm kind of looking for here are, um, I was going to say, Bird Admirer. I want to pick up one or two Bird Admirers. Uh, again, kind of in the same vein to where we can't you know, really pick and choose what we do to our opponent's units. Uh, we need ways to block flyers, and the Bird Admirer fits that. Uh, we want a, you know a few more of these interactive spells. Ideally, locked in the cemeteries. Ideally, crossbow shots. Uh, but you know, something a little bit more than Geist Wave. Uh, and then we want some of these ramp cards if we can find them. So if we can find uh, uh, more root coil creepers, or if we can find the unblinking eye, I, I think we'll be in a pretty good space here. So with this, again, the Pestilent Wolf is a one of the better two drops since it can trade up with your opponent's fours and fives. Got a second Geist Wave, so I don't feel bad about uh, rare drafting earlier. <laughs> yeah, this is this is coming together. This is looking okay. We get the thirteen cards in our hand. Okay, well here I'm I don't think I'm ever going to play multiple Secrets of the Key. Probably not ever play multiple Starling Wolves either. But at the end of the day, if like we have to play two of one of these cards, I think I just want to play two of the Snarling Wolves. Take the green card, probably never playing Bounding Wolf. Oh, beautiful. I, I will play Tapping at the Window in these decks, but I, I want to guarantee that we have our second Bird Admirer. I think it's I think it's just that important in this deck. Okay, so Bounding Wolf can go. I'm going to hang on to Dawnheart Mentor for a bit. Uh, there is a world where we try to use this uh, Coven ability. Probably not. We're probably just going to count on Unnatural Growth to carry us in the late game, but we'll leave it there for now. And here we got ourselves a Shadow Beast sighting. Perfect. Let's just go ahead and move out the Mentor. We don't really want to play it. Okay, okay. I could see playing Croaking Counterpart. Um, create a copy of a, a creature except it becomes a frog. Uh, there is the clear shot here. Oh, is, these are both quite good. Uh, do we, what do we have to take advantage of this with uh, as far as uh, these abilities go? We have a Death Bonnet Sprout. The Snarling Wolf is mad, but you can do it. Um, Trisk A to file is kind of okay, but probably not going to use it. Root Coil Creeper is fine. Um, we have some cards to take usage of the, the counterpart. I think I'm just going to wait and see if this tables uh, and take the clear shot. This is what a crossbow shot is. <laughs> I'm horrible at remembering card names, but this is the, the best removal spell that we'll ever have access to. Right, not much here. There is Gale Drifter, which, you know, works with self-mill, but I don't think it's super important here. I'm going to go with the Contortionist Troop. Uh, this would play out quite nicely if we're able to uh, table that uh, Frog Generator. If you're putting down the two plus one plus one counters every turn, it's quite good. Uh, I, I think we can take advantage of this. A lot of these boards get kind of stalled out. And then as far as Coven goes, right, having the Shadow Beast sighting really helps covens. Uh, we're not a coven deck by any means, but, you know, two and three are the super easy ones to hit. It's zero, one, and four where you have to do a bit of work, and then having all these four attack units really helps if you want to actually hit a coven. Okay. All right, this is coming together. I'd like to high roll some gold cards here and feel really good about it, but <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to wait and see on that. 
Yeah, like at this stage, I'm not. Uh, I want the ramp cards. We would be happy to pick up organ grinders. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to playing uh, Dawn Heart Rejuvenator, but uh, in this pack here, we finally found an unblinking observer. Uh, this is where we're gonna be uh, gonna be stuck with this one. But uh, yeah, I can see like the Rejuvenator working. If we're gonna try and play unnatural growths, the the seven mana on Shadow Beast Sighting is kind of expensive to to flash back, but. Observer is exactly who we're looking for here. Got a second one. Perfect. Not missing out on too much in that pack. Third one? <laughs> what do we feel about a third one? Uh, we don't have that much Disturb. Instants or Sorceries. Again, the, the big one is the Shadow Beast Sighting. What are we missing out on if we don't take this Observer's uh, Secrets of the Key? This is fine. We could just pull out a bunch of these two drops out of our deck, right? If we, realistically, if we just get to, like, play it and then ramp into a Shadow Beast sighting and trade it off, that's probably a good enough deal. Three cards your library, put any back. Yeah, we never play the Otherworldly Gaze. Just take the Uncommon. Gotta get those wild cards, get, get our standard decks rolling together. <laughs> Okay, okay. I like what's happening here. Let me, let me go ahead and start moving out some of these these two drops and see where we're we're getting. Ooh, the Dire Stain Rampage. Don't know what it does, but it's <laughs> the card's called Dire Stain. But no, this is a eccentric farmer. We're we're missing out on a lot of the self mill stuff, which is kind of a pain. Like we're this is pick eight. We're not going to see any new cards. We don't have any organ uh, organ hoarders. We don't. This is our only eccentric farmer. Uh, so it's it's kind of like maybe we'll pick up. Uh, some tapping at the windows. I would certainly be happy to play one of those at this stage. Play Drown Yard Amalgam. Probably not, but we'll, we'll stop and think about it as we look for more uh, <laughs> more ways to self-mill. Harvest Tide Sentries are reasonable too. Probably not going to play it, but it can clog up the board a bit. Probably not going to play the Candle Guide either, but we've been happy enough with him. Bird Admirer number three. Ooh, tapping at the window. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, we're just like a little bit light on the mill, right? We don't have the organ hoarders. We don't have... We only have the one eccentric farmer. We only have the one death bonnet sprout. But I think we have the tools for success here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's pull this together. Uh, at the top end, is there anything we want to remove? We probably do just go ahead and pull out the Drown Yard Amalgam. I can't imagine we want to play it. Uh... Otherwise, we may be stuck with the Candlelit Calvary. But, I mean, we do have the Unnatural Growth as a reasonable late-game play. We also, I think we take this out. Not the, the, the Hunter, the Candlelit Calvary. Because we also have this Contortionist Troop, uh, which can count as an expensive bro. Interesting thinking now, yeah, the Frog card didn't table. I guess it's a rare, so it's kind of tough to table rares, but um, would have been nice if it did. What else do we have? I'm not as excited about things like Turn to Earth when we don't have the mill cards. Like, ideally, we would have, like, two or three farmers and two organ hoarders and maybe another Death Bond Sprout or something. That's, like, you know, really getting the things rolling. Uh, and we just don't have those cards. Okay, so we'll take that out. I think... I don't want a big pile of Geist Waves. I think I just want one copy. Could look to take out an Unblinking Observer, but I don't think we need to. Like, if we take out the two Wolves... Our twos look pretty good now. Like we have our six, two, we have seven two drops. It's a good number. I, I think of the the minimum I want in this format is six, uh, between our ones and our twos, six or seven. Uh, it it kind of feels like if you don't have six or seven, you run into too many games where you don't play a card until the third turn, and it's just too easy to get tempoed out in those games. Uh, but we've got one, two, three, six, seven, eight twos. Then nine once we get up to the sprout. So we could look to remove a little bit of something else there. I'm looking to like take out one bird admirer, and that should make it a little bit easier for us. Um, but what else do we have? Are we missing anything? Is the Don Hart mentor out here. Okay, I don't feel like we're missing anything. Um, and so I think we can keep turn to earth. Let's just take out one. Of, it's either I think we're either taking out an unblinking observer or a pestilent wolf. Uh, what what do our spells look like? It's just the shadow beast sightings. Let's take out an unblinking observer. Hang on to the pestilent wolves. 
and then I think I want to edit this mana to be like, do we need to go 10-7 to try and cast the unnatural growth? Life is kind of okay. Well, it's rough, right? If we, if we want to play a ramp card on two, uh, those all require blue mana, so I think we'll have to stay here. We'll stay with nine and eight. All right, let's get to it. Great. Let's see. I mean, this turned out okay. There we go. Here's the games. Uh, we didn't, you know, pick up the, the the good a lot of the good mill cards. We have a handful of them. We just have, but we just had the one sprout and the one uh, eccentric farmer. I'd rather kind of have like six or seven uh, cards if we kind of had our way. But this this is this is kind of a struggle, right? Uh, as far as this deck goes, I think the games we're going to win are where we play a shadow beast sighting on three, or when we. You just stall long enough to play a natural growth, and I don't feel like this hand really does any of that. Uh, so I think we're safe to just go ahead and mulligan this one. Look for a hand that actually does something in the early game, uh, and this looks much better. So we'll keep this six. I'm tempted to just throw away a land. Uh, so we can, like, carry ourselves with Root Coil Creeper a bit, and then hopefully high roll with the Eccentric Farmer. I think that's fine. And so that's another thing with, like, the farmers. I do like having these things, like the Death Bonnet Sprout, uh, as the means to, you know, improve our chances with the farmer. We got to, you're, <clears throat> I don't know how these mathematics work out exactly, but you're probably like, a, you know, 70% chance to hit uh, on this naturally. Like we're at 45%, like three tries in a row. But uh, this is going to be, like, you know, pretty painful if we miss here. So it's nice to have that sprout down there to potentially give you uh, a couple more shots at hitting a land. So we missed the land, but hit two flashbacks. All right. Greedy boys were being greedy, so maybe that's what we get. <laughs> but still no land. Oh, that's brutal. This thing has ward. I want to just send it, like, send it back to his hand. Just so we come out here and like buy ourselves some more time. Oh, hang on. We can't flashback this Shadow Beast sighting. The Root Coil Creeper gives us two mana. Okay, crisis averted. It's certainly... Oh, no, we can't. <laughs> no, we can't. I saw the secrets of the key lit up and thought we could do it. That's not the case. All right, so let's just get dudes down. No attacks. Frownies. Dude's even playing jack-o'-lantern to ace our graveyard. I, I know this is, like, reasonable and acceptable in the current format, just... Sucks to see it. <laughs> Sucks to see it thrown out against you. Okay. Uh, well, that works. We we got two options here. Um, I th we we can return the blood thief for a tempo play, or we can look to make a three three contortionist troop and start deploying plus one plus one counters. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards the Contortionist troop. I don't feel like we ever just come out here and win a tempo game anyways. Uh, so uh, let's add the troop for three. Auto pay. No attacks. <clears throat> then I'm going to start like boosting up our farmer. He's our uh, most likely candidate to be you know, a safe combat. Whatever your combat trick is, we'll take it. All right, he's going to have like plus three, plus three, and indestructible or something here. You don't just <laughs> you don't just attack into a three, four for funsies. Sure. But hopefully he doesn't have another play after that. Okay, got our Hulk. That feels good. Now, this is a space where I think we we pop off on the uh, on the aggression. I, I think we geist wave back the blood thief. We tapping at the window. Let's tap at the window first and just see what happens. But I'm I'm pretty sure we want to geist wave and then just blast in for nine. All right, well, we hit a dude. Could certainly be worse. Okay. 
Acro. Now, where do we want to put the troop? Like, we can't hit a one or a two. We have to hit one of our threes. Um, I'm kind of, like, leaning towards the Hulk. I think I would prefer them to, like, kill our Hulk at this point as opposed to kill our, our troop. Uh, and this way, if, say, we like, we put the counter on the troop and then we remove um, a unit out of their graveyard, it kind of leaves us in a space to where uh, we uh, have the two four fours and might lose our coven if one of our small units falls. And so it might be kind of nice to just spread this out. So we get to... Look at the top... Do you not get to do this? Look at the top cards. Or your level, X is the amount of life your opponent's lost. He needed to play it pre-combat to, to get the card draw. Gotcha. Alright, well, I think it's it's safe enough just to trade out the Hulk here. I think we could probably attack with the Covetous Castaway as well. Uh, be okay-ish to get that going in our graveyard. Well, we should probably leave the troop back. Just hit with the Hulk. It's probably going to trade with this 4-4. Four -four. Want to draw some cards? I can get behind that. All right, so uh, th this is kind of like an unfortunate space we've gotten ourselves into. I think we just throw away the observer. We can't risk blocking with the contortionist troop, uh, and if we throw, if we put our cast away in front of this, we uh, we lose our uh, coven. Kind of want to hang on to that for the moment. I think I think we're in a fine space here. Maybe we should have tapped at the window last turn instead of getting the clues. Hmm. Okay. Not particularly scary. But how in our unit like you're gonna like you're gonna play a removal spell. Alright. Bomb dude. So we can tap, see what happens, and then still play our uh, our other unit. Excellent wolf it is. Well, we can turn the earth. I don't think that's where we're at at this exact moment. Oh, hang on. That's kind of kind of problematic. He's going to get to do his card draw thing now. I was thinking we are going to get to add the Pestilent Wolf, perhaps, here. I didn't really want to add this unit, because uh, we're just not going to be drawing any cards off of it. But this is fine. This boy's just, boy's just got big. These little, we can't clear shot down the 4-4, four four, which is kind of awkward. So let's do this. Let's start with the clue. See if we don't pick up a land. Or anything. Pick up a land. Don't think there's a reason to play these other cards now. I don't think he also ever plays, uh, plays his Rite of Oblivion, given his current board. So I think we can hold off on this thing. Let's just go ahead and pass... Oh no no no! I want to I want to get the wolf down. Then we can pass. And if this turn comes down to say like blocking Florian with the covetous castaway and then trading our pestilent wolf into a Scaveny silversmith, I I think that works out just fine.
Okay. All the Shadow Beast sightings. So if we want to play those, like, we get two from the Creeper. We can't get a clear shot out of this. But I think that's okay. We're close to just being able to attack. Right, yeah, we only have two mana. We could still play Turn to Earth if we feel the need, but... Hang on, this costs seven. Let me let me refigure out these mathematics here. We can play this one and then clear shot the Florian if we want. Okay, let's see if we can't line ourselves up for this big clear shot two for one. Seems like he's been kind of like holding on to something. I, I don't feel like this is successful and all the time, but I, I think this just like instantly wins the game like half the time. Right, if this two for one is successful, we just win. Uh, I was gonna say, even if we just get a piece of this, I think that's okay as well. So he protects his Flory and loses his Silversmith. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that's a reasonable two for two. Interesting. How do we feel about this now? Like, can just start like attacking with Pestilent Wolf and then playing the Tireless Hauler. I think that's okay. Also, the other option we have is like trying to Shadow Beast plus uh, Pestilent Wolf block Florian, and that doesn't seem nearly as good. I think the Pestilent Wolf attack now is probably good, and then we can just add in. Uh, the tireless hauler post combat. Good. And so we want to get the flyer down now if he's going to play like that. So let's add in the castaway. I don't think there's there's some stuff I think we wanted to return, like uh, the card draw thing can return, locked in the cemetery can return, clear shot can return. Okay. And say if he just adds like any unit i'm gonna go ahead and turn the earth now as well just to get that removal spell out of this out of the way cool okay well, i'm not like super sure on our game plan on that one i kind of liked just like shutting down what they're doing i know we were throwing away like a card a turn at his florian uh which you know we could just take some damage and let them pick up a card but it seems like we had just like so much value that uh, I, I would rather, you know, if we're going to go down a card a turn, I'd, I'd rather just like lose a card a turn as opposed to have our opponent gain a card. Uh, just keep them locked down with their one dude and let it keep uh, taking us to the abyss every turn. But here, this hand's fine even on the draw. Uh, it would be much nicer on the play if we could get down uh, these Shadow Beast sightings on, on, uh, ahead of our opponent, but this is... This is what we're looking for. No removals, please. Oh, no, he's going to play removals? Oh, that's not cool. What a lame -o. Talking about you, Grand Staff. You are a lame -o. So here, I'm just going to go with Secrets of the Key. Uh, if they want to... Looks like they have the counter spell here, but if they want to counter spell our Secrets of the Key, that's okay. Uh, but I, I want to 
uh, take a second shot at drawing a land next turn. We really want to be dropping our Shadow Beast sightings. So I'd much rather have the two draws at a land as opposed to just one. Discarded a Midnight Ambush, wow. Must have picked up a good one there. All right, well, let's just throw these Shadow Beast sightings in front of every anything and everything. Just We've got all the value in the world with these dudes. I mean, I have to imagine they're going to play like a counter spell here. It seemed like that they were trying to build up before. But it's like, would we rather get the Shadow Beast sighting countered as compared to a Bird Admirer? I'm not completely opposed to it. Like, yes, this has bigger stats, but we might need the might need the Reach unit. Hmm. Probably rather just have a four four. We have four in the graveyard. We can't. Can't tap down the Awakener just yet. Can't clear shot it though. I think I'm okay with this. If this, I mean, if this goes right, it's pretty good. We get to have the five five on the Awakener and then um, try and clear shot. All right, we'll just play more of this card, I guess. <laughs> that's what that's what we're here to be doing today, right? Just playing these playing these Shadow Beast sightings. All right. Like to pick up some more land though. That's the only thing that's getting awkward about this hand. Okay. No, oh, no, we don't. Uh, we don't approve of this kind of thing. Let's let's protect our our unit. Well, this is the turn. We probably have to lock in the cemetery, this Awakener. We don't want him running around with a 4-4 on board. Um, then we can we can still get a Bird Admirer down in this sense. Uh, the Creeper's too important now. Okay. Right, the, cre the Creeper lets us start casting all these Shadow Beast sightings out of our graveyard. That's annoying. Alright, well, we're still in a pretty good spot here. Turns out all these little zombies can't block. I can't imagine... Well, we're, we're short on lethal next turn anyways. He gained two. But, uh... can't imagine that, uh... We're behind here. Interesting. And does he ever really have the uh, the the bounce spell for two mana? All right. 
I don't think we're going to get to pop the rotten reunion. I'd like to find a space to turn the earth that away, but I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. There's our chance. <laughs> yeah, that organ hoarder. And I think we just want units from that point forward. Take out this organ hoarder, take out the flyer, I guess. There's still one in there. He can get an ecstatic awakener back. Maybe we, yeah, this costs four. So we are giving him potential to put a unit on the board. We definitely should have left the Falcon thing and taken the 1-1 one, one out of the mix. That was a, a definite mistake here. So I think here we're just going to attack with the 4-4. Four, four. I don't feel like the 1 damage matters, whereas preventing some of his zombie damage may. Uh, and then we get to add a 4-4 at the end anyways, so. Yeah, we, we should have most certainly taken away his ability to play a unit there. That was, that was a little sloppy. Alright, it didn't burn us, but can't be making... Nasty plays like that and expecting to push into Mystic Mythic. Cool. Okay. Got two wins, not bad. Opponent didn't go out and blow up our unblinking guy. We got to do all kinds of cool stuff. Y'all know how it is. Some people just don't like it. They don't like to have fun. And <laughs> it's kind of fucked up, but that's the way the world is. <laughs> All right. Do something? No. Just the, the text changed. I thought it was an opponent. It's like when LOR Guardian would get us. Uh, have to wait too long and the, the win percentages d disappear. Alrighty. Well, that, that looks like what we're trying to do. Again, this would be much nicer if we were on the play, but we have the, the draw with the Unbleaking Observer into the Shadow Beast, and then if our Observer gets killed, we can play the Farmer on three. So, looking pretty solid. No, sir. All right, there's the big boys. Oh, we can't play all of our cards. <laughs> I want to get the death bonnet sprout down as well. So if he taps our dude, we can still attack with the Observer. We got the, the four mana we need to play the other Shadow Beast sighting. And yeah, like, like we mentioned with the removal, things like Scab Wrangler are problematic, right? We, we don't have fantastic answers to this thing, even if we put a... Um, even if we put the whatever you're called the cot in the cemetery on it, he can still tap it with the tap stuff with his other units. It's kind of a kind of a pain. Uh, but as far as this goes, I think we can trade the observer for the hobbling zombie. I feel like we'll have enough time uh, to play these shadow beast sightings if that's how it is. We do have a ton of land in our hand, and if it doesn't play out that way, 
where he takes the trade on the smaller unit, then we still got a big boy down here. So let's play the farmer. I want to see if we can't find a forest and get the sprout down. We did. Lost our big enchantment, but we did hit another, uh, another flashback. Okay, and then next turn we can start. Uh, we can start bringing the shadow beasts back. We still have our unblinking observer. Good stuff. Tap two, that would be my guess. I wouldn't think you'd want us attacking with Eccentric Farmer. Okay. Maybe he does. That'll level, level up our Death Bonnet Sprout next turn. Right, you're at three, aren't you? Oh, no, just two? That's unfortunate. I thought that was our third one. I saw us just hit the wolf and thought we were doing a little better. for me. Let's see if he taps anything. Doesn't? Interesting. All right. We still got a little value in the mix here with our secrets of the key. Almost, almost, buddy. But you, you at least hit a, uh, you at least hit a, a tapping at the window, and the clear shot's a pretty big pickup here. If he, if he, he might just end up tapping our dude because our board kind of sucks. But say if we get to come in and uh, come in and use the the clear shot to win the combat on the four four, then shoot down the scab wrangler. That'd be that'd be pretty big. Not even super interested in adding the Root Coil Creeper to the board. I think I just want to wait and then add uh, Secrets of the Key on their turn. There's a big draw. <laughs> this is great, great thing when you have an absolute, absolute ton of mana here. You got plans for our big boy? Sure. 
can add the creeper, but we can't draw a card. I think that's okay. Let's just add it all. You know what? Maybe we'll get 13 cards in our hand. <laughs> but there's also a world where they can't... Uh, the, they can't play a card this turn and it flips our bird admirer. Ooh, vivisection's big. It's probably about the best card they could hope for at this space, outside of like a wrath. I think we're good now. We're gonna start start doing big boy stuff. And I just don't want to play any cards this turn. I want our Bird Admirer to flip. Uh, now we can do all kinds of card drawing and spell playing and everything. Uh, I think we're perfectly fine on this board. Got these, these clue tokens with no need to sacrifice them. That's how good things are going. Uh, when he enters the battlefield or attacks, put a slime counter on another creature. Non-horror creatures with slime counters lose their abilities and become two twos. Okay, so he's probably going to put that on our card draw thing. Puts it on the wing shredder. Okay. This isn't permanent, right? This is only if the sludge thing is on the board. Yeah. The counter doesn't do anything. The unit does things. Let's just go ahead and get rid of this. Hang on, hang on, that's not the way we want to do it. We want to Geist Wave this thing, and then we want to clear shot away uh, the Sludge Monster. Okay. Draw your card and stuff, it's fine. Maybe we can get 13 cards in our hand before it's all said and done. <laughs> Is that something we can do out here? Oh no, Triscade Cafile here. <laughs> uh, look at that sludge monster. No, no raised deads onto that thing. only got the Awakener. We have to deal with that thing attacking next turn, but I think it's okay. We can make a 4-4 with our Shadow Beast sighting. Okay. Draw, draw yourself a big pile of cards. But 
this scab wrangler has been top tier annoying this whole game like i said you know the not being able to lock in the cemetery away some of these cards is is really painful for blue green there's no uh no like humility effects to take away all their abilities nothing just bounce spells and can't untap got to be weak somewhere i guess but something something to take take note of when you're getting yourself into these Gotta bring the heat. I mean, are we, are we willing to just take four? It, it gets us in kind of a spot to where we're at risk of dying to flyers. I think we can take this one. And he can't, he can't just tap all of our dudes on the crack back, right? Or he'll just die. So if, if his game plan is to, uh, you know, tap three things to tap our 6-6 our six, six next turn, then I, I think that's more than acceptable. Okay. Anything worth taking out of here? We're going to get a unit. We'll take the Awakener. I think that should be enough. Leaves us some blockers. He's going to put his Hobbling Zombie in front of our 6-6. Six, six, take four. Okay. And say he might block with a drifter now that he's kind of at the space to where he can just hit with the the wrangler and two zombies to tap but that's fine We're gonna get lethal here. Did I mess that up? Oh, we're just lethal, aren't we? Yeah, that was too greedy. I, I, I lose track of these zombies being able to deal damage. He can come in and uh, tap one of our units. Right? He can use the wrangler, the two drifters, to tap one thing and then hit with everything else. Do we have anything we could? <laughs> we can draw, turn to earth off of our, uh, off of our clue to gain two. That's still short. He's going to hit us for 10. Oh, that was, that was sloppy. I mean, I guess, I mean, we were running out of, out of stuff to do. Uh, that, that was kind of why I was worried about the no block on the demon on the previous turn. Uh, I think we just got a little, a little anxious. Should have. I mean, we had the advantage there. We had the the card draw on the board and everything. That was just a little, uh, a little, a little too aggressive. Those cards are a pain in the ass to deal with. It just are. No way to deal with that stuff. You can deal with like the Gavany Trapper because you can lock it down, but. The, the scab thing is, is just a real pain. All right, well, the, if there's ever a draw to look for, it's one like this with the turn one Sprout, the turn two Creeper, and then the turn three Shadow Beast. This is, uh, this is the stuff to make up for that poor play in the, in the previous one. Okay. Let's 
got the answer to our Shadow Beast sighting. With a partial answer, I guess. He, he can get rid of the flashback piece. Does protect our death bonnet sprout though. We're getting a third of the way to flipping. Lost our clear shot, that kinda sucks. Okay. There's a couple of like flash cards that would have been annoying here. He could have played like the bird or he could have played uh Pendlegeist or whatever that thing is is the would have been the annoying one, but yeah, I think that was fine. Unit number two, along with a turn to earth. Our attacks here aren't any good, but we just have the 4-4. Four, four. Potentially should have gone ahead and just drawn a card with the with the clue. Like if we pick up a four four, th then we can just go ahead and play it instead of playing se secrets to the key and drawing a card. Can, if we it comes down to it, we can use the taking down our four four sure. We can say we can use the root coil creeper to bring back uh, the flashback spell. All right, let's spend all the mana. How do we feel now? I mean, we can attack with the Hulk, but that's not, not very good. Uh, we're just adding a land. Draw, start drawing cards with this thing. It's about as good as that's going to get. highlighting this this jack-o-lantern like he wants the wants the mana from it which is good <laughs> boom him with the turn to earth uh, we won't we won't be doing that today we do need to find ourselves some action though don't have don't have very much going on here Three target cards in graveyards. Do we ever want to hit anything in ours? Like, we could return the clear shot. I think I'm okay with that. Definitely want to hit the behemoth. I believe the occultist will get to eat that next turn. Sure, you can have jack o' lantern back. How do we switch to our graveyard? Doesn't switch. 
choose up to three target cards in graveyards. Hmm. Feels like we should have been able to target ours, but what else? Let's draw them cards. Maybe maybe something will turn up here. Not really. Nothing really <laughs> turned up. I think it's okay. I mean, the, the Pestilent Wolf is a fine trader here, but it's hoping, hoping for a little better. Should just be going for 13 cards in hand. That's what we need to do. <laughs> We're close. We're close to it. You're not spending the mana? Interesting. Oh, we, 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 we don't have the mana for that. Oh, no. Oh, what a disaster. So our dude just sucks now. Oh. I thought he only cost two to activate. Fuck. Well, that sucks. I guess that explains why he was willing to attack into that board. <laughs> Damn. Okay. We're still fine. We just need to pick up something that isn't land. Oh boy. We're gonna get ran over fast. I don't know if we can recover from this one. I mean, it's so tough for our 4 4s to attack into a board like this. There's the occultist. All right, well, we have good blockers now. I mean, the, the big problem with this board is that um, we don't have an answer to these six, these six health units. Let's at least do what we can. Let's get the Shadow Beast sighting down. How much... Can we play both halves? Can. Still got these these big unblockable bros. Maybe we'll get them with the gain two health on turn to earth. <laughs> that's our that's our move. That's our play. That's certainly not good. We we were kind of lined up to where we could at least double block these amalgams with our four fours, not lose anything. I think we have to give up on the Hulk. I mean, it sucks that it's about to get big, but Okay, well that was at least somewhat promising. It should be tough for them to add too many, too much in the way of big boys here. And we could make a completely gigantic contortionist troop, but I think I still want to get Covetous Castaway down. Covetous Castaway is the dude we want to be blocking with this turn. Uh, so that we can potentially get the flyer back. And then whatever mana is left we'll use to play with the, the troop. Looks like we can play it for 7. Okay. And I 
I think I want to put the bonus onto our 4-4. Four four. That's our, our unit that's going to be getting into combat next turn. And to make sure we were covered, I wasn't even quite sure. We got one two one two four seven, so we're good in that sense. This is our like most fragile unit in the sense that it it dies to bounce spells, but I think this is safe. Behemoth, it is. So what do you think, like, do we ever really have to worry about this Drown Yard Amalgam? That is his kind of, like, way to get a kill here. We have to either play the Locked in the Cemetery on the Behemoth or the Amalgam. Um, I mean, we don't even have to really play it right away. Let's draw a card first. The Bounce spell? That's pretty cool. It's just like, I feel like we can just deal with the behemoth. I think the amalgam is the one to tap. Like, it's just like, if things stall out forever, we can't interact with their board, uh, then that, that dude just becomes a problem. I'm gonna bounce this. Or land and tap good. We can't be drawing cards anyways, but... Okay. Excellent. That played out good. I, I was worried about a, a full block onto our 5-5. Uh, our five five. Uh, we don't have, like, really good results to that. It's like we just get to kill the scab and the veteran. Uh, but... Good. Now the 6-6 the six, six can trade with the, the behemoth. That was the big the, the big space with uh, leveling up our, our dude there. Okay, okay. It's taken a lot of work, but we might we might be able to do this. We still have the unnatural growth in, in our deck as, a, as the means to uh, make all of our dudes gigantic as well. Keeping tri triple green back for us. Okay, I think that's fine. It's weird that he didn't like replay his behemoth. He's got to be up to some kind of shenanigans here. I, mean, I don't I doubt hanging on drowned yard of Alchem's that big of a big of highlight. Oh, didn't re I forgot Corpse Cobble was a... Uh, I thought that was a sorcery. Alright, we well, made a big boy. 8-8, eight, eight, nothing we can do about that. Let's see, if we're going to play the stuff in our hand, that costs four. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then only one mana for spells. Okay. Let's get wide. We got him down to three, so there's a, a non-zero chance that we can we, we can just blast in with, uh, with all of our units next turn. And we only got four spells left in our deck. <laughs> Eleven cards, four spells. We gotta, we gotta make it work with what we got here. Hmm. 
We could turn the earth some of our graveyard back in if we felt the need, but we don't even really have that many good cards in here. <laughs> I guess uh, the the other thing we can consider is we do have this, um, this five to flash. He's got four mana. We, we do have the root coil creeper that we can use to bring back one of our exiled cards, one of our uh, shadow beast sightings. So that potential is there. We, do we just win with this? If we attack with everything, he blocks 6-6 six, six here. I think so. I think we want to hit with like this. So this way, he only has the one card in his hand. He can have two blocks and a removal spell and then we'll still get in for four damage. That has happened. He'll block a six and a two and then take four. Perfect. Whew, okay. Enough of these decks to where we, we we have to deal with the the things that we can't deal with. Nobody wants to deal with the things they can't deal with. <laughs> Oof. Okay, next round. No, oh, that is not a winner. <laughs> nothing, nothing about this looks good. We're supposed to keep it fair and take a mulligan when we want to. But I think this is better than going to five. Uh, <clears throat> if we, like, immediately draw a forest, that would be, you know, pretty good. Maybe we should be getting rid of the death bonnet sprout, though. Right, that's it's a little slow. If we draw a forest, we're never playing this immediate anytime soon, anyways. I think that's a, a reasonable shuffle. Saw the green and was like, "Ooh, we hit the forest." <laughs> there it is. Oh, nice, nice. And is he going to counter our spell? You're not supposed to be playing that in blue-white. You don't do anything with the zombie. All right, he's going to flash in a griff or something. Nebble Gast Intruder. Okay. We're ready to get on the big boy plan. Uh, this is going to be very strange for them to do something that, to where we don't want to just go forest tireless holler next turn. But <clears throat> I dig it. I like what's happening. We're highlighting our card. No, no bounce spells. We're supposed to be the one having the fun, not you. <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna get bounced, aren't you? Sure. So dang bust, you get all the big boys. <laughs> The biggest of boys coming down on Bust Battlefield here. Right, but we need we need some action. We're we're running out of stuff to do. We can uh we can flash back Shadow Beast sighting next turn. And then after that, I mean Covetous Castaway belongs in our graveyard, not in our hand. <laughs> and so uh, hopefully we can we can find something find a use for him. We don't have any of the 
uh, any of the milk cards. <laughs> Aggressive. Ooh, we're a for we're a forest off. I'm surprised to see him bring this aggression. I thought he was going to try and line up a double block here. All right. There is a world where we can lethal next turn, right? If we draw a forest, he attacks. He attacks with both of the things. Just has like one unit behind. We draw a forest and then bounces dudes and attack for sixteen because we can double all of our attack. That'd be sweet. I'm all about the sweet plays, so <laughs> maybe maybe we'll get to do one here. Hmm. He's thinking hard on this one. Why are you highlighting that zombie? Are you really going to attack with the zombie here? No? Okay. All right, well, we can defend ourselves from double blocks with the Geist Wave. Uh, I was hoping for a little bit better turn than this. Like the lethal turn was what I was, <laughs> what I was particularly hoping for. But I think this is fine. Can let them draw a card with the captain again if they want. It's not a big deal. It's like I almost don't want to play Bird Admirer because it incentivizes them to not attack with the Nebelgast Intruder. I can't, I can't imagine that's the way to look at this. We do have to make kind of like the crappy block onto the Intruder with the Bird Admirer because he just gets like the free attack with it 100% of the time with Search Party Captain in his hand. Uh, but, I mean, I think if we trade a combat trick for our Bird Admirer, we're, we're okay with that anyways. And we are like heavily incentivized to just pass next turn. At least as far as playing cards goes, to flip the bird admirer and the hobbler. If we if we draw a forest, we're never doing that. But um, we're gonna have to draw a real gem uh, to to not want to go to nightfall next turn. Oh, he's scared. He's scared, isn't he? <laughs> Forest, nice. Look how big my units are now. <laughs> Oh, this is fun for everyone. Fun for everyone right here. I think we should come in with the Bird Admirer. I, there's, there's like no way he lethals this next turn. I can't imagine what weird cards he would have to have to lethal this. Even if like, there is like the plus two attack spell. So I, I guess I could imagine a world where he like, has his two mana here for a bounce spell, returns our token, blocks the Bird Admirer with the Search Party Captain, but that's still not like anywhere near enough to be like presenting lethals when we have a Tireless Hauler and an untapped uh, Castaway on the board. Cool. 
know, the this is even somewhat safe. Like if he has the the Wrath of God card, uh, that would be unfortunate. That would be like the biggest comeback that he could potentially have here. But the, you know, the game wouldn't be over, right? We would still be getting the Covetous Castaway back on the deal. But I assure you, it would be highly problematic <laughs> if he plays if he plays the Wrath of God here. Okay. We may not be able to lethal. If he plays a dude and blocks a four, we're only looking at presenting eight damage. That's not cool, I assure you. You gotta play something. You gotta have a dude here, my man. How many time banks you get? Jeez. Put it on put us on turbo mode, please. Alright. Let's assume he's got something. He didn't just concede. Flash creature, bounce spell, something. Then I, I think we're good to just go to Nightfall. They, the, this seems like a deck he may be able to flip it back on us. But I, I think this is fine. Okay, We've got two blockers. If he blocks our two bigs, we're looking to get in for six. Get us with a double strike zombie. Do we win the game if uh, he has a combat trick here? We still come in for three? Okay, block. Right, if he plays a plus two, plus two card on it, uh, we lose our unit, but then he doesn't have any mana. Oh, oh, that was a saucy one. I am glad that we kind of protected ourselves here. That's not a space where I want to be just taking eight damage, but not bad. Not bad, my man. Now our units suck. <laughs> Alright. Oh, hang on. Cover what? Cast Can the castaway attack? No. That was a nice little set of comeback cards brother had there. Alright, well I feel much better with Dualcraft Trainer off the board. That's the, the big way for him to come in here and do mean things to us. And we definitely should have tapped at the window first just to kind of essentially guarantee that we hit a uh, we hit a unit now I, I think we want to just like pop this uh, this lunark veteran not let him draw it is that even a big deal I mean it gives him the opportunity to gain a bunch of health his, his health is already pretty high though let's just play the unit oh we can still do it though oh, I forgot my root coil creeper can make two mana yeah, we, we should have... If we put something on the stack first, then we'll go ahead and do it. Okay. Lisa. Ugh, that's gross. 
<sighs> okay. We even we even have all right. We still got our locked in the cemetery in the deck somewhere. Hmm. Tapping at the window doesn't doesn't really do it for me. Got what do we have here? Four seven nine mana. Can Shadow be sighting? And then if tapping at the window is a sorcery, we can play it as well. But we we need to do it like this. I'll make double green. What? No, I don't want to do that. Give me the manas. All right, Pestilent Wolf. Not exactly who we're looking for, but get something going here. No attacks. Can we... Hang on, hang on. Is this a thing? What, do you only bring back flashback spells? Oh, okay. I was going to say, I saw I saw the the unnatural growth in Exile, and I was like, can, if we can ex bring anything back from Exile, that would be huge. Oh my gosh, this is brutal, though. Up to 16. And then with, with Lisa, whatever the... Whatever units dies, he gets back at the end of the turn. So if we attack with everything... What happens? He doesn't get value blocks anywhere. He can stop Bird Admirer with the Candle Grove Witch if they want. But that's really it. We have to redraw all of these, which is okay. How much does our hand cost? Seven. So we can we can play our entire hand here. Okay. Let's get him in there. I guess the only other option I would see here would be to uh, use the Root Coil Creeper to bring back our 4-4 four, four spell. I mean, geez, I mean, does this even punch in for any damage? I didn't I didn't stop to see in the process, but I I don't think so. Right, because his units are going to die to the Phantom. And then the Phantom's going to gain health. Root Coil Creeper will go. He's going to kill our Unblinking Observer with something. Gonna gain two. I guess we do have like our four four coming in. We're, we'll net a bit of damage here. Gains two. Kathar goes back at the end of the turn. Yep. Okay, and cards. So, I mean, we might stop him from attacking with Lisa at this point. It's not even that likely. It's very tough for us to deal 14. Hmm. So what happens? I mean, if we go to 14, let's assume he has two units. He's got a Candle Grove Witch and maybe something else. The biggest thing we could do is, like, he can block our four with something. There's no way. We don't even have 14 on board, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirteen's all we have. Sludge Monster? Oh, Jesus. <sighs> well, we just got to draw one of our removal spells. That's, like, that's all we got. We got 14 cards and two removal spells. Wow, he doesn't hit our bird admirers. It's interesting.
All right, let's go to Knight. He can sludge, his sludge monsters aren't great now. If he attacks, he needs to sludge monster our Pestilent Wolf. Otherwise, we can uh, double block Lisa with the two wing shredders. It also gives us the opportunity to just block with co the, the Covetous Castaway and try to get the, the Flyer on board. Okay. That sucks to put on Lisa, because now he's in the he's in the space to where he can uh, put a, a a slime counter on Wing Shredder. Or a, a slime count a slime counter on Wing Shredder and then we can't take down the Lisa with a single unit. Okay, so we're accepting that he's just like a two a high life total to kill next turn, right? I think, I think we can't get around that. Uh, so we just have to do like this, this, and this. Then we can give our Pestilent Wolf Death Touch. He still has to kill off our Castaway, so we get another Flyer. Uh, I think this is okay. All to one. We have this turn to earth in our graveyard as well if we need to gain a couple health. Let's get the sludge thing back. It's brutal. What a brutal game. Why didn't, why didn't we lose our castaway? Oh, he didn't have to deal damage. He dealt all five damage to the the thing. All right. Well, this one this one's done. We just we can't beat Lisa in this game. He's going to be able to play the slime onto our shredder and then attack in. Oh my goodness! What a frustrating set of games. Just not be, like we we've run the gamut of just like brutal things to not be able to interact with. Ugh. so close to getting in. On these games, I mean, the only thing I the, like really seems like we could have done differently in that one was if we had not blocked that zombie with our our big token thing. But like taking, like we would have taken eight damage, fallen to four, and then just been like super close to just straight up dying to Lisa. Like I, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Just we couldn't get in those like. I'm curious if there's a turn where we, like, missed a point of damage or something since we got him down to, like, one or two. That's probably what happened. There has to be a way to go back and find a turn where we missed a point of damage, where we had all those units on the board, but... Oh, it's insane. All right, but on to the next one. But, yeah, I mean, that's the that's the weakness to these decks, right? I mean, if our, uh, our, our four 4-4 is on turn, like, three and turn four don't do it, then we, we have real issues, um against a lot of decks. I mean, we tend to be good against the, you know, kind of base green decks, but uh, if there's, like, a unit that you have to deal with that you can't just, like, attack around or something, these decks just can't do it. <sighs> Anyways, all right. On to the next one. Let's recover. See if we see if we can at least get these gems back before we run into, into more problems here. Can't, can't keep a hand like this. Uh, just not... It's already a six with the unnatural growth, and we can't. Nothing goes well, even if we hit our cards. So let's send that one away. This one's pretty not good as well, but I think we're stuck with it. Uh, so let's keep the six. I th think we like. <laughs> this is tough. I'm going to get rid of Geist Wave. I think you know, with a hand this bad, it's good enough that we can't just go to five. Like, this hand's not unplayable. We can stall out the game forever with the Castaway and the Bird Admirer. But... Ugh. Oh, what a brutal set. Alright, Covetous Castaway, do your thing. Sure. 
Like, I'm gonna, this, this is, this is scary. It's like, I feel like we need to add this unit, because, like, what are we going to do next turn? Are we just going to play Bird Admirer? Like, that, uh, this, uh, this is brutal. But it's like, I, I don't feel like we can run it out as our first unit this game. It's just going to get popped by a defense trait. take it. If he wants to, to spend his whole turn taking down our Covetous Castaway, I'm, I'm pretty okay with it. Okay. Uh, this is this is why I wanted to get the, the, the this guy down, just as a, a means to um, start drawing cards, because we're just not doing anything. We probably can't, realistically can't play it until turn six until we can cycle it, but we'll see. nothing to do it's just so bad right i mean if we if we play this card and then our opponent has a removal for it we, we just never win the game we have to, we have to wait a turn it, it seems like it might be reasonably safe if they're just adding the dark heart rejuvenator uh, against our wing shredder but oh man We can't even draw cards with it. Uh, we should have played it. I was thinking, I was thinking along the lines of this being a, a, a four, like a colorless four draw, not a blue and three. Oh my goodness! Didn't we didn't draw the island to to take the punish away from us? What a frustrating set of games. Are we safe to just take one hit from this? I mean, this is this is brutal, right? I mean, it doesn't have trample, but he has all the mana in the world, and we're not putting any pressure on them. I mean, I, we can try a block. But we can't send everything in front of it because he has the Donhart Mentor. I think we just no block this first one. And we have to we just have to draw something. Forest, that's that's about right. <laughs> I mean I guess we we're just being sloppy now. Like uh we we could have Turn, we needed to turn turn the earth away, his thing that makes the Shadow Beasts, but this, this game was just done for. This is a frustrating one. And so, uh, I mean, that was not not the highlight of a set of games for certain. Like, at least we got to see, like, some of the highlights of the Simic deck, but that was ultimately just, like, super painful. So let's get this pulled up real quick. We'll talk about it a little bit more. I mean, this, this deck... It turned out okay. We we missed on some of the parts, but um, oh, that was just ultimately like a pretty a pretty frustrating way to have it go. And so yeah, like the the big things with this deck. Um, again, you're looking for like two sets of things, right? You you want the self mill cards. The self mill cards being uh, Death Bonnet Sprout. You want um, Eccentric Farmer, and then you want um, Organ Grinder. And so those are your big self-mill options. They all uh, synergize well together. They get the Death Bonnet Sprout flipping early. The Sprout helps uh, flip over some lands in the early game for your eccentric farmers. And then uh, the Organ Grinder you know, helps shove the flashback cards to your graveyard, gives you some card draw. Uh, it's an all a nice, wonderful collection of cards. Uh, thing number two you're looking to do is with uh, Unblinking Observer, Root Coil Creeper, uh, and Shadow Beast Sighting. And so those all play well together. The the um, uh, the the ramp cards let you play your shadow beast sightings on turn three. They let you play organ grinders on turn three, uh, and then it's just kind of a, a big cycle of good effects. Since uh, if you you know start to organ grinder say on turn five, on turn six you might be able to uh, 
uh, flash back your your Shadow Beast sightings. And so uh, a lot of this deck comes to being, you know, how much of these cards are we able to assemble? Uh, and we I think we hit kind of like the minimum amount for it to be interesting, but we didn't hit like the real like high roll level of these. Uh, we, we hit on the ramp cards. Like if you hit three or four ramp cards, it's good. Three Shadow Beast sightings is kind of a, a requirement, but then you want like three or four ramp cards. And then ideally we would have like five or six self mill cards between, uh, well, we say like five or six, if you're able to get like two, two and two or like three sprouts, that's hard to do because it's uncommon, but you know, like two sprouts, you don't want like five working grinders, <laughs> right? But if you're able to hit like five or six of these self mill cards, that is the, the other piece of this deck. Um, and then beyond that, you're really just looking for your removal spells. And I think the removal is what, you know, really comes down to make this on the, on the weaker side of decks. Um, I, I think if, you know, we had gone through this draft and just played a bunch of like coven decks and werewolf decks and vampires decks, anything that wasn't just like this collection of, you know, must interact with units, then, then we would have been fine. Uh, that this, you know, pound for pound throws a ton of stats into stuff and it, it's very challenging to interact with our stats, but you know, when opponent plays like the, the scob tapper, you just can't do anything about it when they play a high, a super high value unit like Lisa, and you just can't do anything about it. It's pretty tough to deal with. I feel like we took every single, I know we took every single clear shot that we saw. I feel like we took all of the um, uh, locked in the cemeteries and we might have taken all of the, it's really weird to get this far without having any of the dual for dominances but that would be kind of like the next tier of, of cards you're looking for. And so uh, there's just, uh, uh, it's got me frustrated with this one. This was just quite, quite the low roll of a draft uh, as far as the gameplay was concerned. Um, maybe if I was a little better, uh, we could have pulled out some of those games. Maybe if we're, you know, three or four weeks down the road and I'm feeling good about this again, we could have pulled out some of those games, but this runs into some real, real uh, tough, uh, real tough matchups. But you know, back to the back to the cards in the draft, though at least to to move away from uh, the deck itself. Uh, pick one here. I, I'm glad we got to try out this unit. I don't really like it. Uh, it's just a little bit too expensive. Uh, I, I think if it was like you know, pick seven and this turned up, then sure we'd be okay to take it. You know, uh, if if our two drop space is going to come down to either playing uh, Triskaida file or if we're going to be playing uh, you know like bait hook angler. The, then sure, we're going to be much more happy with this, but uh, this is by no means a first pick quality card. Even in those games to where we use this to draw like two or three or four cards, it you know, probably helped us win those games. I think we've fucking lost them anyways because <laughs> we couldn't deal with the scab. But um, even when this was good, I wasn't real impressed with it. So it's like, as we look at this pack again, I think the pick here is probably just Organ Grinder. Uh, I could see an argument for Burly Breaker or Diagraph Horde. Um, not so much the Horde, uh, but there, oh, there's even a Tireless Holler down there. One of this, like, uh, diamond of cards are what I think you want to end up with here, and I think that Organ Grinder is likely uh, just the best of all of them. Uh, most certainly in the deck we drafted here, uh, but, you know, if you're more realistically uh, thinking of your options, I mean, it plays... It plays great in all the blue black decks. I, I guess I could see an argument for Tireless Holler. I am this unit keeps just like growing and growing and growing on me. Uh, but if you know, you, if you want to say like, okay, well, Esper gives us the best chances to win, uh, and you want to start with an Esper card, then you probably want to go with the Organ Hoarder. But yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that Triskaida File is not not that good now that we've got to try it. Uh, but here at Impact Two. Uh, Root Coil Creeper, of course, I, I, I feel like this is worth the high roll. This card is just so incredibly good. And it's not like we were missing out on much here. And with, with all of those first picks, it would have transitioned into the Creeper well, even without this Triscata file, right? If we took the Organ Hoarder or if we took the 4-5 the green unit, they would have been fine. It wouldn't have worked with the Siege Zombie, but, uh, the, you know, there's a lot of good things that work out with the Creeper here. And we've tried and tried with this to try and wheel it. Not so much with this, but even the... Um, uh, the thing that puts a plus one, plus one onto a unit and taps something for a turn, uh, we, we can't get those to wheel. And so I feel like we have to just take this here if we really want to go for it. Um, otherwise, I could I could see going for Shadow Beast Sighting. Uh, if we started with the other green card, I could still just see taking Shadow Beast Sighting anyways. But 
I was happy with the pick from here. I think from like that point forward, I felt okay with everything. Um, you know, the Covetous Castaway is good. We missed out on some interaction with Defend the Celestius. Uh, if we ended up in some kind of red cards, there is Purifying Dragon. There's Moon Ranger Slash. So if we had started like, you know, Tireless Hauler, Shadow Beast Sighting to say double green, and then come into this pack and pick up a, a Moon Rage Slash or Purifying Dragon, that, that would have put us into a pretty powerful uh, Werewolves deck, especially rolling through pack two. But I, I, I'm still pretty happy with how this draft turned out. Like, the, the Covetous Castaway is just completely fantastic if you have that mill package. So you have a card that's good early that can come out and block or uh, can come down, you know, through a mill as it give you a big flyer. Good stuff there. So, yeah, I think we <clears throat> we handled this pretty well from here on out. We, we've we gone on at the end about the importance of removal. We took the Locked in the Cemetery here. Uh, again, we can kind of look at these. Geist Wave isn't important removal, but uh, the Don Hart... We didn't draw the Don Hart Mentor in any of those games, but... You know, when you're out here with a bunch of uh, ramp cards, then having something to do with your man at the end of the game is pretty good. I was happy enough with that mentor. Uh, then the the pack started to weaken out here. Flip the switch is meh. Good filler in the Pestilent Wolf. I think these were pretty straightforward. I just wanted to kind of like click through and double check that I didn't just pass on removal at some point. I'm pretty sure I ranked it as highly as it needed to be ranked, and we just didn't see it. Um, so even here, there here's a duel for dominance. Uh, I, I don't think you can realistically take it over a death bonnet sprout, but I guess we did technically pass on a removal spell at some point. Um, and then the rest of this just p went pretty well. Picked up the Shadow Beast Sighting, uh, something on theme again, the Shadow Beast Sighting. Unnatural Growth was just a big boy amongst, you know, a bunch of turds. And yeah, I think this this went good. Could have, I guess we could have taken Geist Wave over the rare, but, uh, you know, I, w I was pretty happy with these nonetheless. And so, yeah, I think that's where we're going to call it. Again, you know, I, I think we've touched on the highlights of the Simic Ramp deck, um, this giving you the, the, the big keys to success. Hopefully uh, your games aren't as frustrating as these, and <laughs> you don't have to run three matches in a row against must-answer must units that you can't answer. But yeah, that is going to do it for us today. Hope you all uh, enjoyed the video. You maybe learned how to... Oh, no, hang on. Shit, slow down. We got these rewards. Hang on. Get back in here. Get back in here. Get these 1,000 gems, some packs. We got to click on the packs here real quick. Strixhaven. I don't know where that came from. We got one, though. What you got here? Strixhaven Stadium? People have been playing this in Constructed. There's apparently a lot of blue-white Constructed decks running around based on the Strixhaven Stadium. Uh, so... Potential there. I'm not familiar with any of the cards in that set unless I've played against them and constructed. So, see, Spectral Adversary, he's pretty medium. He's not, of course, not bad. There's no problem in a two power flyer for two in this format, but um, not as high powered as people would like. All right, Mythic Wild Card. Smoldering Egg? Cool. Uh, I've been dabbling with some dragons and some smoldering eggs and constructed. Uh, I'm not real happy with where the deck is at this point. It feels kind of high rolly to me as well. But maybe maybe that'll get to show up in a video here at some point. Ooh, Storm the Festivals. Definitely need these for constructed. This guy's fantastic. And the last one. What do we got here? Something cool, I'm sure. Geist Flame Reservoir. Not bad. It's pretty it's pretty top it's pretty strong and limited. I don't think this will have a place in constructed. But yeah, that's going to do it for us today. And so as I was saying, you know, I hope you uh, learned how to bitch about your opponent's decks a little bit better. <laughs> Maybe learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching. Uh, this is Bust, and we thank you for being here.